In this video, I'm going to be going over the differences between this e-image tripod and this average Amazon video tripod. A tripod is probably the most annoying piece of equipment that every single filmmaker has to purchase. It's not like it's something that you can kind of skimp on. It really is an essential piece of gear that you have to have no matter what you're doing. Now, I'm pretty sure that a lot of young filmmakers out there thought the exact same thing that I thought when they went out to buy their first video tripod. This is my first video tripod right here. It's a $115 and or video tripod that I found off of Amazon. It's 71 inches, it's pretty well built, but guess what? It's broken. I don't know if you can really tell, but right here, I've got a ton of gaff tape on this because, well, story time. As I was setting up this tripod, I was trying to get a shot that was a little bit lower to the ground, but because it has a mid-level spreader on it, I couldn't really get as low as I wanted to. And unlike a lot of higher end video tripods, the mid-level spreader doesn't come apart. Underestimating my strength a little bit, I ended up breaking the thing apart. Well, that solved my problem. Now I could get lower to the ground, but it created an even bigger problem, which was my tripod was no longer as sturdy as it used to be. Within a few minutes of my tripod just being up, the camera wasn't on it, fortunately. It spread a little too far and fell and broke my ball head piece. So now it's very hard to twist on without getting your hand extremely scratched up. I now call this dumb little mishap as kind of a blessing in disguise because it gave me the opportunity to research some other tripods. I hadn't really known anything other than this for the last two, two and a half years other than renting for my bigger rigs. But I knew that now that I'm doing a little more freelance work, I probably needed a tripod that could really withstand the test of time. So automatically, I felt like I needed to spend more than what I spent on this baby. That brings us to the wonderful E-Image tripod. It's got a different name. It's like the E-Image 2PL2 something. Hold on. The E-Image two-stage aluminum tripod with GH03 head. There's also another option that's a little bit more expensive that has the GH05 head, which is just, there's different features to it. You can check out the differences. I chose the GH03 head for certain specs that I'm gonna get into in just a minute. So first of all, let's go over some of the pros of each of these tripods. Since they're about in the same price range, this one would cost me $249, and this one's about $115. They're pretty comparable, and when you're talking about different options in that budget area, it might be worth spending that extra $150 to get the features that are included in this tripod. Even though I know it can be super tempting to go out and get that $80 tripod that everyone's talking about. But really, you're probably better off buying this baby that you're gonna use for years to come. So first thing I wanna mention is it's got a snap-on quick release plate. It's on there. Super easy. The one thing though that I wish they would have added onto this quick release plate is that it didn't have to slide out. I wish it would just snap back out. That'd be super nice. Which in this tripod, this has that feature. You twist the little knob and it comes out and then it goes back in. It's easy as that. This head does feature a fluid pan. It's not adjustable though, but it is very smooth. There's not any jerkiness and it slows down super easy. Luckily though, it does feature an adjustable tilt, which you can adjust the resistance using the knob on the side. That adjustable tilt is actually one of the biggest reasons I didn't go with the GH05. A lot of the reviews were saying that the GH03 was a better purchase because of the fact that you could adjust the tilt. In the GH05, even though it does have counterbalance and adjustable pan, the tilt is one set motion. Now I think the greatest feature of this tripod is the fact that the legs are a mono locking system. No more bending over to that awkward second handle in order to get your second stage down. You do the one stage, lift it up and you're done. Also included are some wide rubber feet so that you can get better grips on like wood floors and things like that. But they also feature spikes in case you're working outside in the dirt. The bag is super high quality. This thing has a super strong zipper setup as well as it's very padded and has a compartment where you can store the handle. You can also buckle down the tripod with some simple straps that buckle together. Also the mid-level spreader is easily removable. So no more breaking the mid-level spreader because you underestimated your strength. And it's actually lighter weight for most aluminum tripods, which I was really surprised by. It has an 11 pound weight capacity. And like I said, it comes in at a cool $249 on most websites. Now let's go over the pros of this $115 Amazon tripod. So I think biggest pro, 
is that it's cheap. For the price that you pay, you're definitely getting an amazing deal. The first thing I wanna mention is that the handle is adjustable. You can twist this knob and it extends to be pretty long as well as super short depending on if you're working in smaller spaces, which is one thing that you don't get with the e-image tripod head. Also, this tripod goes up to 74 inches, which is about 13 inches higher not including the head of the e-image tripod. Including the head, it's about nine to eight or nine inches taller. This also has a 17.6 pound load capacity, which is about six pounds more than the e-image tripod head. Like I said, the tripod plate is a snap in and snap out tripod plate, which makes it just even more convenient. I found that a lot of times I hit my follow focus on the edge of the tripod when I'm trying to slide it out, but that snap in and snap out makes things super easy. Nothing gets in the way and I can leave my follow focus on. Also, surprisingly, it's a mostly metal design. The handles are made of metal. The only thing that's really plastic are the, is the mid-level spreader and a couple things on the head. But other than that, you're getting almost an entirely metal design for added durability. So now I'm just gonna quickly go over the cons of each of these tripods. So for the e-image tripod, like I mentioned, the handle isn't adjustable in length. You kind of get what you get, but I don't really think that's a deal breaker because it's a pretty good length. It's kind of like mid-level between long and short but it makes it work. The pan is not adjustable, but I don't think that's a big deal because mostly I want my tilt to be adjustable. My pan, I can change the speed of how I'm moving and how much pressure I'm putting on left and right pretty easily and I can get used to that. Like I said, again, the plate doesn't have a snap out. So you're sliding things back and forth, which kind of risks hitting your fall of focus or something like that, which can be annoying. On top of that, it is a little short. The legs are 61 inches, including the head, it's 64 inches, 65 inches, somewhere around there. Now there's a lot more cons when you look at the Amazon tripod, but I think for the price, you're getting a pretty good deal. Even though the e-image tripod is pretty great if you're trying to get into a more pro-consumer tripod, but the pan and tilt on this Andor tripod is not adjustable. It's one setting, you either lock or you have it unlocked, that's all you get. Also the pan and tilt are pretty jerky. So if you're trying to like start from one side and go the other, the beginning of your shot, kinda is worthless and so is the end because of the fact that it's jerking. The bag is poorly designed on the Amazon tripod. It's super cheap, it tears easily, and it's thin. It just doesn't look or feel nice at all. The spreader does not remove. You're stuck with that spreader. The lowest length is the lowest that you'll be able to go. It does have the two-stage handles instead of the monolocking system like the e-image but most video tripods are gonna have that unless you spend a little bit more. So that's expected to have that two-stage setup. It is hard to set up. I know how embarrassing it can be to be in front of a client and you're trying to adjust your tripod and they're kind of just staring at you and you feel so awkward just because you're trying to get the shot done. You're just trying to get paid and make a living. And so it can be stressful to set up sometimes. The ball head comes loose all the time. I found myself constantly trying to readjust the ball head on this. And even when I'd like really spent my time trying to tighten it down, it would still come apart when I'm trying to pan. It's a lot heavier than the e-image tripod, surprisingly, but I think that's because it's a little bit taller. So all in all, I'm super happy with this e-image tripod. It kind of solves all the problems that I had with this tripod, but I did spend in order to get it. Now I know I didn't spend a lot. This is still a very budget tripod, and even a $400 video tripod is very budget. I've used the higher end ones before, but they're all meant for different things, and I haven't gotten to the point that I need to spend eight or $900 on a tripod yet. Although I do plan to get there at some point, but right now, this does everything I need it to, and I'm really happy with it. If you wanna pick up either of these tripods, check out the link in the description down below. The Amazon one is an affiliate link, just so you know. I will get paid if you decide to purchase that tripod. Like I said, I have really enjoyed this tripod. I was beating myself up for like an entire week after I broke this tripod, just thinking I should just buy the same tripod. This one's worked really well for me for two years. But you know, since I'm getting a little bit more client work, and it's kind of starting to take off a little bit more, I needed something a little nicer. Now, if you're wondering what freaking setup I have my camera on right now, well, I'll just show you. So if you look really close, it's a music stand that I have just put as high as I can get. And yeah. So I wanna know what you guys think. Do you think this tripod is worth an extra $149 over this tripod? Or do you think it'd be better just to, you know, pick up a budget option and stick with it. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, maybe think about subscribing and hitting that bell button so you never miss out on new young filmmaker content. Good luck filmmaking.